Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Hallelujah. Whatever you've been dealing with that's been bothering you, it's God's will that you overcome it. Not be overcome, but that you are an overcomer, triumphant over it. And the thing that will help you is your faith, and it's so simple. I mean, I didn't say it was always easy, but it's a simple choice to believe and be positive instead of hopeless and negative. Uh, any of us, any day of the week, can get to looking at problems, can get to looking at needs, and despair. And the more you talk about what you don't know and what you don't have and what you can't do and what you don't understand, you'll become more and more unthankful. And when you become unthankful, Romans says, it darkens your understanding. You see and understand less and less. There's death in it. Romans 8 says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And Isaiah said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. So it's a simple choice. You can do it right now to just say, I choose to believe God is helping me, and he will help me. He will show me what I need to see. One of the dumbest things you could ever do is get mad at God. Class, are you all away? Get mad at God and blame Him for what you don't have and what's not happening and what you're not seeing. Um, you're, that's acting like you know more than you do. That's acting like He's not fair or He's not faithful. And what you're doing, if you're, if you're getting aggravated at Him and mad at Him and put out with Him, you're making a decision not to trust Him. And it's a choice. But God is faithful. And just because some things don't seem right to you doesn't mean God has let you down. And I assure you, when you see the truth, you will admit God was more gracious than you would have asked Him to be. There were just all kinds of things you didn't know, you didn't see, you didn't understand. And so that's everybody today. Let's make a choice. We're going to trust God. What do you mean? We're going to trust that He's good. Right? That He's faithful. That He's merciful. Regardless of what we see or don't see. Understand or don't understand. Right? Right? Say it out loud. Father God, I trust you. I choose you. I believe in you. I trust in you. I rely on you. On your goodness. On your mercy. On your faithfulness. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And I know you'll never leave me. Thank you, Lord, for taking me all the way through. Total victory to your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Man, when you make that choice and you really do it in your heart, you already feel better. <laughs> I mean, immediately things get brighter. Immediately. And that's because of that, that getting that darkness off of you from being unthankful. You begin to be enlightened. And in his light, you see more light. And as you keep going, that light will include how to get you out of this jam you've been in. Hallelujah. And it'll be to the glory of God. Let's look in the scripture again. And we, and we looked some in Matthew 20 last time. Let's look in Mark's account today. Mark the 10th chapter. Continuing our study of the healing of blind uh, Bartimaeus. And it's uh, recorded in Matthew 20 and in Mark 10 and in Luke 18. So we'll be looking at all three of these as, as time goes by. But in Mark 10 and verse 46, it says, And they came to Jericho, 
And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Now this is a, um, uh, a different thing. We, we, we see several other blind people healed in the ministry of Jesus. I, I suppose there were thousands. And because the scripture said most of what happened is not recorded. But even in the 20 cases that are recorded, there are several. But this is the only one I'm aware of where we're given the person's name, their specific name. And we're told this is Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, which that's what Bar means, Bar Timaeus, son of Timaeus. And so we've been given his name. And he sat by the highway side begging and the implication is that this was something that he did on a regular basis. This is how he subsisted, was being on the side of the road, because this was a highly trafficked area, and this road, and he's there, I suppose, who knows, every day or almost every day, and, uh, you know, asking for alms, uh, help. And so he's sitting by the highway side begging, begging. Everybody say begging. Begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. When he heard that it was Jesus. Now we saw, you know, back when we were talking about uh, Hebrews 11, That's how faith comes. Faith comes how? By hearing. Something changed in him when he heard that it was Jesus. And he heard about Jesus. Now, you got to remember by this time, a lot of ministry has already happened. You know, this is the uh, 19th in our study. So all those previous ones, uh, you know, most of them happened in an earlier time. And so, uh, in all likelihood, uh, Bartimaeus has heard about Jesus. You know, if you're, if you're blind and you hear about people getting healed from blindness, right? You're going to notice that. That's going to stick with you. And you, so you probably have questions. Who? Where? How did this happen, right? I mean, somebody got healed from being blind? And so... When he, he can't see, he can hear, and he hears this great crowd multitude coming down the road. No doubt they were talking. You know, people don't usually just all travel walking silently, you know. So there's a big crowd, and he hears it. This is unusual. This is not what he normally hears sitting on the side of the road. So what is this? Who is this? You can tell something special is going on, something different's going on. What is this? And they said, it's, it's that prophet Jesus. It's that prophet Jesus. And there's this big crowd with him. And oh, he gets excited. I said, he got excited. He got excited. And faith will always get excited. This is one of the key indicators of faith. Why would you say that, Brother Keith? Because... Like we studied in Hebrews 11, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, hoped for, Bible hope, is actually expectation. That's what it is. And so if you are expecting something great, something good, even just the possibility of something great and good is going to what? It's going to excite you. Is that right? And when you get excited, you're liable to get loud. You could get a little bit loud. Is that right? Somebody said, well, you don't have to shout. Well, but I'm excited. Right? I'm excited. Now, the reason I say this is because when you hear somebody say, you know, well, what are we going to do about this? I I guess we just have to believe God. (laughs) I guess. It's come down to that. Well, no, that's, there's no indication that you're actually going to believe in God. You're not excited about anything. 
you're depressed. Right? Faith is not depressed. It's not. Faith is not depressed. No. Being full of fear, being full of questions, that's the opposite of being full of faith. So we, we tell when he heard about Jesus, did faith come? Can you, can you see something happened in him? Man, he got stirred up. And he can't see. He can't just, it's not smart to just run out in the middle of the road and not be able to see. What can you do? His voice works. Right? And this is another key with faith. You got to use what you got. Hmm? I said you got to use what you got. Got to use what you got. Uh, if you got a part of your body that's not working, well, you move what you can. And you expect something to happen with the rest. Right? You, you, you use, you don't sit and do nothing. You, you, faith is not passive. And faith is not uh, sad and depressed. Uh, the Lord gave me this phrase some years ago. Doubt despairs, complains, and is sad. But faith rejoices, gives thanks, and is glad. <laughs> Say it out loud. Doubt, Doubt despairs, despairs complains, complains, and is sad. And is sad. Faith, faith rejoices, rejoices, gives thanks, gives thanks and, is glad. and is glad. There, there will be an excitement where there is faith because there is an anticipation. There is an expectation of something good. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the, the substance or the ground of things expected. It is the uh, evidence of things uh, not seen. Excuse me, the, the, the confidence of things not seen. Confidence and conviction are two words I'm trying to say. Confidence of things expected. Conviction of things not seen, expectation. You know, I asked my wife Phyllis just, just every once in a while, what are we excited about? <laughs> now you're laughing, but why, why am I saying that? Because if we're not excited about anything, we're not in faith about anything. Hmm? And it's easy just to bump along, right? And just, you know, be satisfied with the status quo and the way things are. And oh, ho, hum. Another day, you know, got to do some things again. No. Well, uh, I couldn't come and be animated with you in faith school then. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, another recording. All right, get going. Well, you could tell that. And you'd be like, maybe I can watch something else. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's true <laughs> and with all the choices we've got on the internet and all the things that are going on I mean people's attention span has got about that long and so but there's another side you don't want to be trying to put on a show I don't mean that and doing a bunch of animated stuff that's not real but how could I be genuinely uh, excited about anything I have seen what God's Word does in people's lives. I, I have seen the total change faith can make in your life. Oh, hallelujah. In your body, see, you're getting excited too. In your body, in your mind, in your marriage, in your finances, in your ministry, in your business, it can totally change your life. Hear me getting louder? Why? Because you believe it. If you don't believe it, you're not going to be excited. And so we, we, there was an excitement in Bartimaeus' voice. Jesus heard something that stopped him in his tracks. And it wasn't, this was different from just begging. Believing is not begging. Begging is not believing. Begging has a sad tone, a defeated tone. Believing has a victory tone. Amen. Amen. Can you see this class? Um, 
It didn't say, you know, that he, uh, reading the whole account, that, that this man got healed because he begged Jesus. Jesus didn't look at him and say, you know, good job, your begging has made you whole. You've never heard that, you never will. And yet, that's what religion will teach you to do. Beg God, beg God, beg, call it prayer, but it's just begging. Beg, 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 and maybe if you beg long enough and sincere enough and hard enough, God will decide to do something for you. Well, how will I know uh, that he decides? Well, if it happens, then that means he decided to do it. Well, then that means you're in the dark the whole time, and what's required of you? Just begging? Why? Does God get some kind of pleasure out of seeing us grovel? You, you'd think I was mean if I was that way. <laughs> huh? If you said, Brother Keith, would you do this for me? And I said, well, uh, show me some real begging. <laughs> I mean, no, nah, now get on down there. <laughs> and I, I, you know, beg like you mean it. You would think, well, he's, he's an awful individual. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's terrible. <laughs> and yet, I mean, millions of church going people, that's their picture of God. That you, got, you know, you just got to get more serious about your begging. We call it prayer, but <laughs> it's begging. You, you got to get, you know, more serious. No, no. Be we, we don't see anybody healed because of begging. Amen. Not one case. Not one. We see Jesus tell people, your faith made you whole. Religion has made beggars out of people. But the Word and the Spirit of God will make believers out of you. And like the, like the psalmist said, like David said, I've, I've been young and now I'm old. But I have never seen the righteous. Uh, what? Forsaken. Forsaken. Nor what? His seed begging for breath. Why? Not forsaken, so you don't need to beg. If God's everything that we say He is, if He's as big as we say He is, if, if He's as good as we say He is, why do we need to beg? Ever. We don't need to beg. We need to believe. And these are not the same thing. So all these years of begging, Bartimaeus didn't get healed. But this day, something changed. And when he heard about Jesus, he got stirred up. He got excited. Now, apply that personally. What are you excited about today? Don't say, well, I, I, excuse me, I've been hearing you, you know, so I'm, I'm excited what you're excited. No, you're not. <clears throat> what are you excited about? And I'm not talking about trying to work something up. I'm not trying to be talking about just being loud for no reason. I'm talking about genuine excitement. And the reason I say that is because if, if you're honest and say, well, I'm not excited about anything, Brother Keith. Okay, well, that's, at least you know where to start. But you're not in faith. And don't pretend like you are. You got to get in faith. How do I get in faith? Well, you're in a good place. Just come into faith school, right? To, to get started. But you need to hear from him about that situation. Yes. His word is the thing that will get you stirred up about it. That you can see light. You can see a victory. You can see a way out. And then when you see it, and, and through his word coming to you, faith is stirred up and brought up. You'll no longer be depressed about your situation. Even though it may not have changed in the natural you're no longer depressed about it. Why? Because you can see something else. You, you're looking by faith at something else. Why did Bartimaeus get excited? Did he get stirred up? Did he get loud? Because he, he is thinking the man that has ministered healing to other blind people is right over there somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. I've never been this close to a miracle as I am right now. And if I can just get him to stop and minister to me. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me.
See, he believed he had had mercy on others. Have mercy on me too. Have mercy on me. He must have believed he could. Right? He must have believed it was possible. And all things are possible to him that believes. Many charged him that he should hold his peace. I know a lot of even religious people, they don't think it's that big of a deal whether you make a confession or whether you make a request or not, but the enemy does. That's why he will try to shut you up and shut you down. The scripture said in 2 Corinthians 4.13, I believe it is, says, we having the same spirit of faith, according as I believed, he said, I, I believed and I've spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. The Lord is the apostle and high priest of our confession of what we say. The enemy knows that what you say in faith and what you pray in faith is powerful and life-changing. He will endeavor to shut you up. He will endeavor to silence you. And you've got to make up your mind not to be silenced. Hmm? And there'll be times where you'll feel like being silent. You know? You, you'll feel like, you know, I'm, I'm just tired of this. I'm tired of dealing with this. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I don't want to talk about my confession. I don't want to talk about faith. Just leave me alone. That's how you die young. That's how you, you're defeated. And I don't mean that we're supposed to go around bothering and trying to correct people all the time. Don't do that. That is annoying. But at the same time, it is. But at the same time, you, you want to correct yourself and you want to recognize it when you, ha- you, you hadn't been excited about anything for six months and where you've lost your joy, you've lost your peace, you're not in faith, you're not in good shape spiritually, and at the rate you're going, you're not going to get a miracle. You're not going to see any results. And so there's got to be a change. So that means you need to get out of the rut you've been in. You need to hear something else, right? You need to see something else. You need to come to faith school, right? Get in your chair and quit talking unbelief and fear and failure and quit listening to people. And that includes your own family. A lot of times family, they don't know what they're doing, but they will call you and they'll get on the phone with you or they'll try to text with you or whatever do it and just... All I want to talk about is the problem. All I want to talk about is how bad it is and how they they love you and feel sorry for you. And they're so sorry. And they're so sorry and they're so sorry. And they cry. And they want to cry with you. And that won't help you. I said that won't help you. And I know sometimes they mean well, but you cannot listen to that stuff all the time and stay in faith. You can't. It'll get you down. It'll pull you down. See, if people are depressed, if you fellowship with them a lot, it's going to go one way or the other. You're either going to pull them up or they're going to pull you down. And people tend to go down. And in this world, you don't find faith on every corner. You find a lot of depression, (laughs) don't you? And a lot of heaviness, and a lot of defeat, and a lot of confusion, and a lot of self-pity. That's everywhere. And so you want to be around something that's going to lift you up, something that's going to pick you up. You know, that's one reason you want to be in a good church. And in a good church, you not only get your faith fed in the regular services, and you're with other faith people worshiping God and ministering to God, receiving from God, but also relationships and fellowships develop uh, between you and other people in the church family. And you should uh, get what, you, uh, what we call uh, faith buddies. What do you mean? Well, a faith buddy is somebody who's going to talk faith to you no matter what. Right? And there are times when you may be a little bit stronger 
one week than they are, and then maybe a few weeks later, they're more stronger uh, than you are on that thing. And uh, faith friends and faith buddies, uh, they understand secret code talk. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you, you call and say, hey, how's it going? Uh, tell me again how healed I am. Tell me again. You don't have to make a bad confession. You don't have to say, well, I'm not doing too good. And I just feel down and, and bad. No, no, the more you say it, the worse it's going to be. Don't, and people say, well, I just need to, I just need to get it out. I just need to vent. No, you don't need to let it in. <laughs> Venting makes it worse. Venting is yielding to darkness. And the more you vent uh, with all this spew, all this defeat and, and woe is me and it's so bad and so sad, when you get through, you're going to feel worse than you ever did. You're going to be lower than you were before you started. That's not a way to get free. That's yielding to the problem, making it worse. Some things you want to resist and give them no place. No place in your thoughts, no place in your voice, no place in your actions. And other people that are faith people, they know how not to yield to that and how to yield to the right thing. And they say, well, let me tell you how healed you are. you so healed. The healed people call you healed. I mean, you're so healed. You look in the dictionary by healed and your picture is right there by the side. Healed. You're healed. <laughs> and they begin to quote scriptures to you. And, and, and we should encourage each other and build each other up, not pull each other down. Are you excited about anything yes. today? Yes. If not, you can be. You can get there by listening to the right things, cutting off the wrong things, watching the right things, cutting off the wrong things. Said out loud, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. Our time's up again today, but uh, as you can see, Faith is real. Faith is a choice. Come back tomorrow and get some more. <laughs> Till then, we'll see you here in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941 Seven zero two seven three nine zero.